everyone we'll start in about a minute just waiting for a few more people to join in Hello everyone, welcome to this special webinar co-hosted by Gupshop and Smooth. Uh, my name is Sohan and I also have Frederick with me, Fred Duberville from Smooth. So in the tech industry, uh, 2016 can be described as the year of the chatbot. With the surge in popularity, businesses have quickly adopted this paradigm. This is because chatbots provide an instant and non-intrusive and also effective way for businesses to connect with their users. So this webinar will show you how you can create a chatbot using Gupshop and Smooch and use it to engage with your customers. Uh, really appreciate all of you all joining in. Uh, before that, just a little bit about our presenters. My name is Sohan Maheshwar and I lead developer relations at Gupshop. Uh, that's my Twitter right that you see there. And we also have Fred Dubovil, who is product specialist at Smooch and his Twitter handle is also there. Okay then, so uh, I'm sure a lot of you all know about chatbots and about the chatbot ecosystem, but let, let me take you through why chatbots are exactly uh, the talk of the town right now. Right, so I'm going to talk about a paradigm shift, and uh, this is a term that you probably come across quite a bit while uh, you know coming uh, reading articles about chatbots. So in the consumer tech world in the 1980s, uh, the paradigm, the dominant paradigm back then was the personal computer. Uh, you know, you had clients, it was a client-side paradigm and you had software such as uh, Microsoft Excel and Lotus Notes and, uh, you know, PCs invaded homes and uh, yeah, people had access to PCs thanks to the cheaper cost of computing back then. Prior to that, it was available only in universities and defense organizations and government organizations. Um, as time went on, in the next 10 years or so, and sometime in the 90s, uh, the browser became the paradigm. Right? And uh, Thanks to connectivity and uh, you know the World Wide Web, uh, people could access information sitting in the comfort of their own homes. And essentially, you know, you had a lot of websites pop up. A lot of companies popped up back then, such as Google, Facebook. I mean, uh, Google, uh, eBay, Yahoo, and a bunch of other companies that wouldn't have existed in the PC era. Um, the paradigm back then, even though it was a browser, was a very server-side sort of paradigm. And uh, people enjoy the internet. I mean, they still do. You could access real-time information. But as time went on, uh, you know, there were a lot of advancements in uh, um, uh, computing, and especially in the hardware field. And uh, smartphones became the new paradigm somewhere in mid 2000s. Uh, you had a whole bunch of apps come up, such as you know, uh, Instagram and Snapchat and Angry Birds, and none of these could have obviously existed in the web or the client, uh, desktop PC era. Uh, as if on time, sometime in the mid 2010s, uh, the paradigm has shifted again, and this time towards messaging. And um, of course, now the dominant paradigm is going to be chatbots, which is going to happen on messaging. And what's interesting is again, we have sort of shifted to a server side sort of uh, paradigm where you know uh, you're using like a client server model. Uh, not only that, you know. Um, 
messaging has overtaken the number of monthly active users on messaging apps has overtaken the number of active users on the big four social networking apps. This is a graph from a study that uh, business intelligence did. And as you can see, sometime in 2015, the number of users on messaging apps uh, surged past the number of users on social networking apps, and, and this is only increasing. Uh, Gartner, a company that does a lot of surveying in, in the space, predicts that by 2019, customer requests from messaging will exceed requests on social. And also that 53% of people are more likely to shop with the business they can directly message. Right. And so this obviously means that messaging represents a huge business and that all businesses really need to be on messaging. Also, I think uh, one thing that we all can agree on is there is app fatigue among users right now. Maybe two, three years ago, apps were the next big thing. Everyone was talking about apps. Uh, if there was a huge, huge beeline you know, to make an app for your business. Uh, but it's clear that users are apt out. Uh, people, users don't like downloading, don't, users don't want to download you know, five, six hundred different apps on their phones and uh, there's a lot of friction in creating like a new account, uh, getting a one-time password, verifying email. It's, it's just too much friction for something that you might use the one or two times. Uh, also, right now, the app store is so crowded, there are, about, there are more than a billion apps out there, which means that user acquisition costs are really high. And especially as an independent developer or a smaller company that doesn't necessarily have a clout of, say, Facebook or, you know, a larger, a larger media mogul, uh, getting users to your app is just really difficult. Uh, the app store is kind of messed up, and uh, you know you have to spend a lot on getting users. And uh, also, let's not forget that there's a high cost of development, of upgrading, and marketing. Uh, the upgrade cycles also take really long. Apple and Google generally have their own sort of. Uh, you know, approval processes, and then you also have to get users to actually download new upgrades. And all this can take a lot of time and effort and uh, technical, uh, uh, you know, technical effort as well. Uh, which is why something like a chatbot, which would mean you could access all your favorite websites or services within messaging, uh, since it works on a messaging paradigm, is going to change all of this. And what's more is that every brand and every business is building a bot strategy. Uh, this is just a small set of companies that Facebook long, uh, announced that were building bots. Uh, mo most of these companies that you see here already have chatbots ready. You can test them or just go to their Facebook page and you know start chatting with uh, these chatbots. And this is just a small cut of the companies that actually have chatbots live right now. Um, from personal experience, a lot of companies have come to us, you know, for help to build their chatbots, and um, I can tell you that you know the interest in the space is insane. I mean, pretty much every company that we work with wants a chatbot right now. A little bit about Gupshop uh, for now, um, and a little bit about the bot ecosystem as well. Uh, so this particular diagram that you see here is the technical stack for a user to really chat to the chatbot or to interact with the chatbot. Right at the bottom, of course, what you see are the users. And uh, the users interact on these messaging channels. I mean, you have everything from uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, Slack, and a whole bunch of other channels, Facebook Messenger. Each of these channels have their own channel APIs that are channel specific. Uh, for instance, Twitter has their own APIs. Facebook Messenger has their own APIs. Um, and these obviously differ. Above that, you have this layer of, uh, layer of class platform APIs. Uh, these APIs essentially, uh, you know, you can use pretty much any chatbot. Like, say, for instance, a weather chatbot uh, would need an open weather API, for instance. Uh, a chatbot to check uh, the soccer scores might need an uh, API for that. Uh, you know, so basically any sort of cross-platform API is depending on what your bot does. The layer above that is obviously an, the infrastructure layer. Uh, you know, you have your development and, and your QA environments, you have your hosting, your chatbot needs to be hosted somewhere on like a server. Uh, you need chatbot monitoring and you also need analytics. You know, analytics very important uh, with respect to your chatbot. For instance, you know, uh, re-engagement analytics, re-engagement metrics, uh, segmenting your users into cohorts, seeing, you know, where the drop-offs are, what, how many users are engaged at day one, day zero, day up to like say day six or day seven. Now each of these layers obviously have analogs in the web as well. For instance, the, infra, uh, the infrastructure analog here would be something like an AWS, Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure that's providing the infrastructure as well as monitoring and uh, 
you know, a hosting environment and also some level of analytics as well. The layer above the infrastructure layer is the layer that we term bot to bot communication. Now this is a layer that it's quite interesting to be honest, not too many companies have uh, are doing too much work on it right now. But essentially what it means is at, uh, in a few years time we will probably see bots being able to communicate with other bots. That opens up a whole bunch of new possibilities of course, but for this you obviously need uh, standards and specifications around chatbots. Right now the ecosystem is reasonably fragmented because each messaging platform has their own sort of standard. So as, as things stand right now, chatbots aren't able to interact with each other. But as the ecosystem evolves, there will be a set of standards around chatbots and then hopefully we will see chatbots interacting with other chatbots. The layer above bot to bot communication is the search and discovery mechanism layer. Obviously this is this can be split into search and discovery for humans and search and discovery for chatbots. Your web analog here is the obvious, Google, you have other search engines like Bing and Yahoo and you know DuckDuckGo and a bunch of others as well. Again slightly fragmented right now because there are a bunch of different uh, bot stores that claim to you know, be like a unified sort of bot, uh, bot discovery platform. Also each messaging app has their own uh, bot discovery platform as well. Uh, above the search and discovery layer you have horizontal services. As any ecosystem builds, for instance when we saw the app e ecosystem build you saw a lot of uh, app payments, you saw a lot of uh, infrastructure, ads, national language processing. Say in, 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 the, in a very same way in the bot ecosystem you'll have many horizontal services uh, turn up. You'll have services that offer you know, uh, payments, ads, uh, you know, NLP services, re-engagement services, uh, web analogies are many. PayPal, ad networks, um, you know, things like MailChimp and other CRM tools. These are horizontal services that obviously let you interact with, uh, interact you, uh, let you, let your users interact with bots. Uh, with regards to Gupshop, Gupshop is the current leader in the cross-platform API and in the infrastructure space. Uh, we are a chatbot building platform essentially and if you want to build chatbots, you can come onto our platform. We give you automated hosting, monitoring, analytics. Uh, there's an online IDE as well where you can uh, build your chatbot and you can also test it out. We give you testing tools and uh, also we are a right once uh, build anywhere. So essentially you can, you know, uh, write your chatbot logic once and then publish it to pretty much any messaging channel, be it Facebook Messenger, or Slack, Skype, whatever. Uh, the other couple of layers, the layers which is bot to bot communication and search and discovery is something that we're working on and you know hopefully soon we'll have a product that en enables both of these as well. Right? So right now we have bot building tools for everyone as we put it. We have uh, three es essential tools. One is the IDE bot builder which which I'll show you in a demo a little later on and it's, it's a tool that allows you to build very powerful chatbots and you know in a very simple sort of manner. We also have two tools for non-developers to build. One is called a Flowbot Builder which is a graphical tool or a flow editor for non-developers. Essentially you can build uh, chatbots for you know static sort of content where you can define conversational flows and uh, yeah, it's very simple to use. You can define, okay, if you click this button, here's a message that you'll see, and or if you click this button, here's a GIF you'll see, or here, here's what you present to users. This is a carousel you can present, etc. And we also have a template bot builder, uh, which is uh, pretty much predefined bot templates. I mean, if you have like a small, small to medium business, and you know you don't want to invest time in creating a chatbot, or you don't necessarily have the staff to create a chatbot for for your small business. Uh, we have ready-made templates. For instance, right now we have a restaurant template. Uh, you, all you have to do is enter, you know, the names of the dishes and the prices, and hit hit publish, and your chatbot is live. Right? Uh, they're meant for non non developers or people who don't really want to invest, uh, you know, tech effort in building like a really powerful chatbot, but want something that's a little more quick and easy. Uh, we have a bunch of cross-channel APIs that we support. This is just a small cut of them. As you can see. Pretty much any messaging channel that has opened up their system for APIs is supported by Gupshop. This includes I think on Twitter, Telegram, Facebook Messenger. Uh, we have integrations with Smooch, of course, which we will show you in a bit, but also things like Twilio, Reliance Geo, uh, and Viber coming up soon. So yeah, a uh, little bit of history about Gupshop. 
uh, we have been a leader in the messaging and bot space for many years. Uh, we started off in 2010 as a cloud APIs for SMS. Uh, we, we are one of the leading cloud messaging platforms and we handle about three to four billion messages per month. In 2014 is when we created an app called Team Chat, which is very similar to what Slack is right now, an app for collaborative messaging meant for enterprise. And it was there we pioneered structured messages and you know we built and deployed hundreds of bots. And we launched this in 2014. And then when we saw the paradigm shift towards chatbots happen, which was when we opened up a black bot platform for other developers to come and build bots. Uh, since April, we have about 8,000 plus bots created, and we also have a whole bunch of paying customers who you know, pay us to pay bots for that. These are just some of our uh, customers that we currently have. The ones on the top, such as Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp, use our, still use our SMS product. And the ones at the bottom, such as Content, Ask, Barclay, Sage, HDFC, and a whole bunch of others, uh, we have created chatbots for, uh, are in the process of creating chatbots. Right then. So now uh, Fred will talk to you a little bit about Smooch. I'm just going to hand hand it over to him. Yeah. O over to you, Fred. Hi everyone. Thanks. Um, so on. So let me share my screen very quickly. So now, um, Smooch. Um, so for those uh, of you who don't know Smooch, so um, we're a messaging platform um, that enables um, communication between uh, companies and, uh, and uh, their users. So basically, we help you connect um, with all your users through um, every messaging channel uh, that are available right now. Um, um, but before starting to uh, speak about Smooch itself, I uh, just wanted to summarize um, very quickly what uh, uh, what was just said in the presentation is that right now messaging um, is global. Um, there is more than four millions, uh, four billion messaging accounts. So um, people are starting to spend more time uh, on messaging than anything else uh, online. Um, so we are really focused on customer engagement, customer support, and um, customer engagement right now is very challenging. Um, why? Because um, multi-channel services will continue to increase. Um, your customer will be on different messaging channel and they will want the same experience uh, that they have uh, with, their, um, with their friends on the different uh, messaging channel like uh, Line or, or Facebook Messenger, and one of the behavior that they we want is that they want their history to follow them uh, through any uh, channel and any device that they're using. Um, customer engagement is also challenging um, on, the, on the business side because um, right now if you want to message your customer on the web or um, on Facebook Messenger, you will use different tools. Uh, there will be different interfaces. Um, so both of the of these problems, um, uh, we wanted to, to solve both of these problems um, when creating Smooch, and our solution is basically to connect every messaging channel um, to one or multiple business system uh, that you're using right now, like for example Slack or AppDesk, like um, Front or AppScout. Um, so we centralized every communication. Um, on one or, or multiple uh, business system, and we also connect with um, bot platforms, so for example, GubShop, um, to help you um, uh, monitor your bot uh, and the conversation between your, your user uh, on those uh, business systems. So the benefits of using Smooch and GubShop together, uh, the first one is uh, cross-channel bots. Um, so right now, for every supported uh, Smooch channel, you can deploy your bot. So um, in addition to the existing channel that uh, GubChat have, uh, we have some uh, some other channels like web or or iOS. And another uh, benefit um, would be bot uh, bot supervision. So basically, if you want to keep track of the conversations that the bot is having with your user and a future. Uh, um, uh, future feature could be to uh, enter the conversation as a 
as a, as a human. So that's going to be the, the benefits um, that you have to build a bot um, on top of Smooch and, and GapDrop. Um, so that uh, and that's the part of the of the presentation from Smooch. So I'm gonna give it back to uh, to Soan. Thanks, Fred. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for that. Now uh, let me show you a quick demo on how you can create a chatbot with GupShop and then publish it to Smooch. I hope you can see my screen right now. Yeah. Okay, so this is gupshop.io. This is our home page, as you can see. Uh, we have a login that is integrated with GitHub or Facebook, if you want. I'm going to click on the My Bots button, which takes us to the bot dashboard. And this shows you all the bots that I've created with a whole bunch of uh, statistics and analytics as well. So the thing is, uh, our whole idea was to make uh, chatbot building as easy as possible um, for a developer or, and a non-developer as well. So let me just quickly show you how you can create a chatbot. I'm going to call it webinar. Okay. And these are the options. You can choose to code your own bot, uh, or you can also do code-free bot building, and I spoke about this earlier. So for now, let's click on the code your own bot option. And now typically, if you have to build your own chatbot, you'll have to you know host your bot on a server, create, set up your developer environment, and then actually start coding. Uh, what we have actually done is we have kind of taken all, away all that grunt work for you. So it's already hosted. It's hosted on top of Amazon AWS. And we give you some template code to start with. So you really don't have to, you know, start off from like a, uh, start off by installing different libraries and a whole bunch of things like that. Uh, for instance, you can see this method here called message handler. So any message that your bot receives would be handled by the message handler, right? So you can say something like if, and, and I'm coding in JavaScript here because this is built on top of Node.js. But assume someone says hello. Yeah, you can respond with a hello world or whatever. Right? Um, yeah. And we have a emulator here to test out the conversational aspects of the bot. Um, so we also, you know. Ideally, if you have to test out your bot, you'll have to publish it to, like, say, a Facebook Messenger or a Telegram, and then test it out, uh, to, which involves a few steps. And if you if you want to test it out live, then you'll have to, suppose your Facebook page has like 300,000 likes, then you really don't want to publish it live to your Facebook page and test out a half-built bot. To kind of circumvent that, we have this tool called the Gupshop Proxy Bot. And let me just quickly show that to you. So I'm going to messenger.com. And what we've done is we've installed this proxy bot onto pretty much uh, every messaging channel. So if you go to Telegram, you'll find the proxy bot, you'll find on Slack as well. What it essentially does is it, it mimics the bot that you've just created. So this bot is called Webinar 55 Demo. So I'm just going to say proxy webinar 55 demo. So now this proxy bot is going to act like the bot that we have just created. Oops, I misspelled proxy. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so like like the bot that we just created, once you say hello, yeah, it says hello world, similar to the bot we just created. So now I'm quickly going to show you how you can integrate this with Smooch. So I'm just going to the publish column here, and that will show you the list of all the channels that you can integrate with, Smooch being one of them. And so as you can see, Yeah, these are all the channels that you can integrate with. There's everything from Slack, Twitter, Telegram, Line, etc., to Smooch. So I'm going to click the Publish button. And essentially, what I have to do is I have to go to smooch.com. Oh, sorry, smooch.io uh, login. I'm going to sign right here. And I'm going to create a new app. So I'm going to create a new app for the webinar. Yeah. Once I've created the new app, I'm going to the settings tab and I'm going to generate a new secret key. Once the secret key is generated, I'm going to copy the key ID, which is right here. And 
and I'm going to paste it in, back in the Gupsha publish page. And I'm going to do, do the same with the secret as well. Copy and paste. Once I hit the submit button, the Gupsha smooth integration is done. And it was literally that easy. Now you might think what you would need a uh, Gupsha and smooth integration. Right? Now say for instance you have a business and you want to engage your users with the chatbot. But uh, say it's a customer support chatbot for instance. And, and uh, what we've seen is customer support is one of the verticals that you know, businesses want really uh, urgently you know, as a chatbot. Because I think that is something that chatbots will definitely solve. So say you have a customer service bot. Now suppose a user pings your uh, bot. It, it's very it's it's not easy to you know have a lot of ag agents sitting on the back end replying to queries. One thing that a lot of product companies have actually told us is that eighty percent of um, the, the queries that they receive is comes from a pool of like say ten to fifteen frequently asked questions. And and if you had like a product company or if you worked with a product company before, you'll know that to be true. That about eighty percent of the queries that any customer support receives is largely from the same pool of questions. So it would be really easy to kind of automate something like that. Now, the thing is, if you didn't automate it, you will need to have customer support uh, staff at the back end, like tediously replying to all of this, which is you know how a lot of companies are doing. But if you could create a chatbot that could ex using Gupshop and then publish it to Smooch, your customers can get instant uh, responses to queries that they might have. Now the thing is, what if someone asks a question that you know is out of is, is not in the frequently asked questions or you're not taking it into account. So someone sitting at the back end can actually reply on those rare instances. Right? So that way your customers are getting instant answers to questions they have. The, the customer engagement is very high. The customer satisfaction also is very high. So let me just quickly show you how you can do something like that. Yeah. Uh, so with Smooch, for instance, I'm going to integrations. Right? And um, I can just choose to integrate any customer channel, be it Messenger or Viber, WeChat, whatever, as well as any business system, which is the backend for the integration, like say Slack, HipChat, Front, or even email. Right? So uh, just for demo purpose, we have already built out a bot before the webinar, as you can see here. Um, it's called, let's wait for the page to load. Right, it's called Webinar Demo 11, and I've already built out, uh, built the Webinar Demo as well. So what we've done is we have integrated with Facebook Messenger and with Telegram as customer-facing channels. So that that's where your customers will, you know, interact, and uh, you will be receiving all of these messages on Slack. Right. So let's take uh, Telegram for instance. Um, I'm going to start off by saying hi. <coughs> Yeah, so the chatbot replies saying, hey there, what can I help you with? Um, say I have a problem that I'm uh, not able to log into my account. Right, okay, do you remember your username and password? So now what, what could theoretically happen is if I say yes, um, the chatbot can give like a whole bunch of steps and, you know, help me uh, resolve this issue. But if I say no, uh, what I essentially want is for a human at the back end to talk to the chatbot. So assuming I say no, there's no response right now. But that's because you can, as you can see, this is a Slack channel, and you know all the messages have are showing uh, are shown here, right? So I can choose to reply from here and say, okay, no worries, uh, I can help you with this. Right? And I, I open Telegram and you can see that reply saying, no worries, I can help you with this. And now a human can actually guide the user in being able to uh, you know, uh, retrieve the user's account. The same thing works well on Facebook as well. Uh, for instance, this is a page that I've created for the demo. I hit message and I say hello. Right. Okay, hey there, what can I help you with? Uh, I can say something like, please help me with my login. Right. Uh, so, as you can see, all these messages are still being displayed in Slack right here. Hey there, whatever. But the, the human at the back end can choose when to reply to the user. Right. So, again, I can say nope. And 
Okay, I can say whatever. So on here, let me help you out. Yeah, and as you can see, the messages come, and now the human can guide your customer. And um, yeah, so as you can see, you can create a very sort of engaging chatbot. Uh, the chatbot can, you know, answer most of the frequently asked questions. But in times when the chatbot's not able to pass the user's question, or maybe the user has asked something out of the ordinary, you can always switch it back to a human at the back end who can take it over from there and, you know, continue uh, leading the user. A right? uh, lot of advantages to this, like I mentioned, you have increased customer satisfaction as well as increased engagement. And, uh, yeah, just overall, I think, leaves a great impression with your customers. Okay then, uh, yeah, so Fred had a few points about the human takeover, so I'm, I'm just going to um, hand him the mic. Yeah, Fred, you can take it from here. Fred, you there? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, Fred, so you, uh, you wanted to say something about, you know, the human takeover as well, right? Um, yes. So, um, so basically, um, um, the the way it works. So, um, so um, Smooch connect with uh, Metsple. If you if you go back on the, on the Smooch uh, homepage, yes. Um, so Smooch connect with multiple uh, business systems. So you can see in the integration, yes, and business system, every. Um, System that you can enable on the back end uh, to answer your your customer. So this is the list of all the uh, the business system we support right now. So everything that you saw uh, uh, with Slack is available on all the the uh, the other business system. So uh, uh, it's not specific to one. Uh, it's it's better that you choose uh, the best that you want and and uh, and join the conversation from uh, from wherever you want. Great, thanks a lot, Fred. So uh, that that brings to uh, an end the de uh, the demo. If you have any questions, we've already got a couple of questions actually. But if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot it out to us. You can use the go to webinar control panel to shoot out any questions that you might have, and Fred and I'll be happy to take them for you. Yeah. So we'll wait maybe a couple of minutes for you all to think of the questions that you all have, and yeah. Okay, uh, we'll take the first question that we have. Yeah, so Priyanka has asked this question and uh, it says, can I use a chatbot created on Gupshop and Smooch on my own website? Uh, that's a pretty great question, Priyanka. So essentially you can. Uh, both Gupshop and Smooch have uh, have options to, you know, create like your own web widget. This essentially means a lot of uh, websites, a lot of businesses want chatbots on their own websites, especially if it's uh, something like a how may I help you or something like a customer service. So you can use the SDK that Smooch offers, create a chatbot on Gupshop, publish it to Smooch, and then create, uh, you know, like your own web widget. And that should serve you. And the, the great thing with, with the Gupshop platform is you can use that chatbot on other platforms as well. Okay. Any other questions, please feel free to send them in. Ah, okay, here's a question from Benny. Uh, Benny asks, how does the Smooch SMS channel work with Gupshop? Okay, Fred, I'll let you take this one. Um, yes, yeah, so um, the, the way, uh, so Smooch works with uh, Twilio for, uh, for SMS. Um, so on our dashboard, you can, um, uh, you can add a Twilio integration. And then, um, we, and then after uh, enabling your uh, your bot on Gupshop and, and Smooch, um, your bot will be automatically deployed on uh, on SMS. So basically, a user will send you a message, um, an SMS, and the bot will reply through an SMS. And you can use one of the um, one of the system to join the conversation. So let's say that um, you join uh, through Slack. So you connect on Slack. And the message that you will send from Slack will be also sent through SMS uh, to the user um, directly. 
Thanks, Fred. Um, Akshay has a question. He asks if the Gupshub chat box SDK is available for Android. Uh, so, Akshay, if you want to, if you have your own app on Android and you want to have a chatbot within your own app, uh, I mean, to, to be honest, yes, there is something available. Uh, I'll just go to the Gupshub. Yeah. So, if you see the published channel here. You, what, what you can do is download the team chat SDK to, for Android into your app, install that, and then publish it to team chat, what you see right here. Uh, team chat was an older product that Gupshop uh, worked on. So yeah, it is possible, but uh, uh, to be honest, you know, one of the reasons why chatbots are popular is because of uh, the fact that, you know, people hardly use bots. So unless you have like a very specific example, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, but it is possible. Um, in addition, you can um, also add Smooch SDK inside your your app. Another other way to do it, um, and it, one of the use cases is that you want to uh, do um, uh, customer support inside your app, and then uh, you want to deploy a bot uh, inside your app as well. So you can do uh, the same thing that we uh, mentioned uh, on Facebook Messenger or Telegram, but do the same with uh, with uh, our in-app uh, SDK. Um, so that you will be able to uh, to have your app, uh, your app, your your customer support inside your app, and then um, uh, a bot deployed on your app, and a customer uh, service person that can join the conversation afterwards. No worries, Akshay. Thanks for the question. Yeah, any other questions that anyone might have, please feel free to shoot it out. Uh, just an FYI, the, the, the channels that Gupshop will soon be integrating with uh, Reliance Geo, uh, Viber, and Kakao Talk. Um, so yeah, and, and hopefully, I, I think I know it's, it's on everyone's mind as to when WhatsApp will open up their business and, you know, there are a whole bunch of articles you know, saying that they will soon. And, and WhatsApp themselves have said that they are opening up their platform for businesses. So uh, rest assured that once they do we will have like an integration out, and, and I'm sure the smooch guys also will uh, you know, have that as one of the channels. Yeah, definitely, um, <laughs> it's also on the radar on our side. So yeah, yeah, yeah. waiting for WhatsApp now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Like Akshay says, the WhatsApp integration would be great. Yeah, Akshay, I mean, I think Fred and I, I mean, we can say that. Pretty much all our customers have been asking for WhatsApp integrations, especially in in countries like India and you know um, some some parts of Europe and even South America. I know WhatsApp is huge, and plus they have like one billion users across the world. So everyone is waiting for the WhatsApp integration. That that just might be the game changer for chatbots. So mm -hmm. uh, just, yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay, then any other questions? If we don't have any more questions in the next minute or so, we can wrap things up. Okay, then. So, yeah, no other questions. We will be sending a recording to everyone who registered, so you will get a recording of the webinar. So, don't fret about it. If you have any questions, feel free to write into us, Gupshop. We have a support page, or you can contact us on Twitter. Uh, Smooch as well, you can just ping them at help at smooch.io and yeah, feel free to contact either Fred or me and we'd be happy to take any of your queries. Uh, thanks so much for attending this, have, have a great rest of the day and yeah, we'll be doing a lot, many of these webinars so yeah, please keep looking out for these. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye. -bye. Bye.